Good morning and a very warm welcome to Elmult. It's an honor and a privilege to have all of you gathered here in the heart of the Democratic Design Center. We live and work in an international and diverse community here. We have designers and engineers, we have dreamers and pragmatists, we have analysts and risk takers, we have thinkers and doers, but all of them driven by curiosity, creativity, and a conscious optimism about a better future. Did you, for instance, know that in this small place in the south of Sweden, we have more than 50 nationalities? Isn't that amazing? It's a special year for us. IKEA turns 75 years. It's a time to both shortly look back, but also to look forward. It's also the year where we have lost our founder and inspirator, Ingvar. If we look back, we see 75 years of combining a passionate interest of life at home, combined with also a deep curiosity towards production and materials. 75 years of stubbornly wanting to become a little bit better every day. 75 years of siding with the many people within wallets. And 75 years of entrepreneurship and democratic design. We have achieved a lot. But it is by no means an end. We are only at the beginning. We are much more intrigued to look forward to the next 75 years, to how we can contribute to creating a better everyday life. For the many, with the many. So what are the things that we want to focus on for the next era? We have identified three. One is we want to become more affordable for many people that cannot afford to buy with us today. Secondly, we want to reach and interact with many more people. And thirdly, we want to have a positive contribution to people, life and society. And we will do that through creating even better products, to enabling people to have a better home, but also to contributing to a better life. With the many, for the many. We want to be part of change in the world by also creating new innovations, exploring new solutions and doing that with the world. But for now, we just want to invite you to have two fantastic days with us together. And what will we do? We will show you what has come out of the collaborations we've announced last year. You will see that here in the Democratic Design Center, and we will show you many more things that we worked on also in IKEA One. We will also show and share you how we do things, focusing on co-create, but also on sustainability. And then, of course, we also want to do, introduce new collaborations, which will help us to also explore those new opportunities and innovations to create a better home and a better life. And then, of course, we will end with throwing a great party where we hope to see all of you. So for now, I just want to invite you to be curious, creative, and let's have two fantastic days together. Thanks for now. Enjoy. Democratic design is like the recipe of a great product. We have a constant desire to make things better. And democratic design helps us to identify a specific objectives for every product, both in every new product, but also in every existing products. Democratic design is the blend of form, function, quality, sustainability, and of course, the low price. It is making sure that we create an offer that responds to everyday needs and dreams and producing it in a responsible way and enabling to live a better life. So, hi everybody, so pleased to have you all here in Elmelt and also so pleased to listen to my colleagues talk about democratic design. Democratic design is the very reason why we're here today. And, uh, you know, to me, something that it didn't say or talk about was actually democratic design. It is a language to us who works here at iOS, at IKEA of Sweden, because it's also one of those things that could break the barriers if we have that common language, no matter where you work or where you come from. We're 54 nationalities in this very house working with product development. So it helps us a lot. So that's the things that we want to share with you today. And we have a lot to share. A lot. And uh, you know what? I'm not that kind of guy who's famous for keeping things in order. So uh, that's why we have a moderator coming here. So please welcome Antonia on stage. It's so great to be here this morning. 
Oh, thank you so much for having me. Antonia, this is your first time in Elmelt, isn't it? It's my first time in Sweden. So my understanding is that IKEA designs and styles the whole country. Is that not? Uh, is that, it's the whole of Sweden, not like Elmelt. That's what we wish for. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but less about me and my travels. We've got so many fantastic collaborations to show you. So let's do this. Finiad. Fun and fashion infuse every item in the Finiad collection. A celebration of student and work life. That's the result of IKEA teaming up with Craig Redman, known for his egg-shaped alter ego Darcel Disappoints, and Colette founder Sarah Andelman. Finiad may have been designed with students in mind, but age doesn't come into it. The collection is for everyone who wants to add some fun to their everyday life. Pattern play, unexpected colours and sizes, and a few quirky surprises get the job done. That's awesome. Looks awesome. <laughs> and as the name of the collection implies, Finiad means renewed. There are also some new takes on old darlings. Craig, welcome. What's it like Thank seeing you. the final collection in that video? Uh, it's a little overwhelming. It's certainly very exciting. And I, I really think the collaborative process between IKEA and uh, Sarah from Colette and myself was what made it kind of tolerable for me. It would have been a little bit too much otherwise. But it's really exciting. Can you talk us through the creative process? Because it is a striking collection. It is. Uh, so the collection is based on my character, Darcel Disappoints, a character I designed around 10 years ago. Uh, he's kind of based on me and my life in New York. Um, and originally, way back then, Sarah from Colette discovered uh, the blog, and she asked me to collaborate on lots of different projects with her. So we have a good history of working together. And then when she proposed that we work together on this project with IKEA, it was super exciting. So we met uh, with Henrik from IKEA in New York and kind of discussed the parameters for the project. And then I went away and started developing some ideas with Sarah and we kind of back and forth from there. I mean, it touched on it in the film a little bit, but how, as one of the designers, would you describe the aesthetic? The de uh, we were kind of talking a little bit about this before. <laughs> this is kind of hard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Absolutely>. tricky questions, <laughs> tricky questions. There's a, he, he's definitely quite cute, but mm -hmm. there's also like a very sinister cynical <laughs> side to him too. Mm -hmm. So I think when you see the collection together, it looks, it has like a sense of fun and there's a sense of chaos to it. Mm -hmm. And then you pull individual items out of the collection and it becomes a little more sublime, I mm -hmm. think. I can't wait for you all to see it. It is brilliant. <laughs> Marcus, when can we see it in Ikea? You know what? It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen in all stores or all over the world at, um, I think it's 2019 in June. So that's when you're going to meet your character. Yes. Love to see it. <laughs> Craig, thank you so, so much. Let's cue the next collaboration. Mark Herad. When American designer, off-white founder, influencer, plus more Virgil Abloh and IKEA get together, the result is Mark Herad, a collection of first home must-haves that don't force you to compromise on who you are. It's somewhere to sit, sleep, work, and store stuff. But function is just part of the greatness. More than anything, these are statement pieces. Challenging tradition. I mean, Marcus, looking at that, it is quite amazing that literally on landing in Elmult one year ago at this exact event, Virgil designed this. No, but that's How did the, that happen? <laughs> you know, he couldn't help himself because we were there, we were having all of those meetings, but he really wanted to work with his hands, so he went into our pattern shop and did a prototype. And that prototype has actually turned into a product right now, which is going to be inside of the collection. So that was made last Democratic Design Day. What has it been like working with now one of the most kind of celebrated designers? He was not that celebrated at the time, was he, huh? When we started out? I kind of feel like maybe you kind of, you know, <laughs> nurtured. Uh, no, I actually think that he's a really, really great guy. And he's one of those Renaissance men also who's into art. He's into 
music, he's into fashion and into architecture as well. So for us, it's been this, you know, it's a constant flow of ideas and it's truly amazing. As a bit of a teaser, how would you describe the collection? Before everyone sees it. I think it's meant to be for millennials, actually, for mm -hmm. young people, and also to, to make them interested in the home again, and to be able to make a statement in your home through the articles that you buy. Now, Virgil, he's busy, but he's going to be a little bit late to the party, am I right? Uh, Virgil is actually coming here, working tomorrow, so uh, let's see if we're going to have to meet him also. That would <laughs> be nice. Yeah. I love that. Virgil Abloh, he's coming back. He is a very busy little bee, um, as have we been. Cue the next collaboration. Frick fans. Time to get this party started. After an exciting design journey, IKEA and Teenage Engineering are getting ready to present the loud and the light result of their collaboration. Portable music collection, perfect for spontaneous sprees. It's the Stockholm-based audio tech company Teenage Engineering that has collaborated with IKEA to make the party come true. The creative collective is made up of designers, engineers and computer programmers that share a love for design, for building stuff and making music. Teenage Engineering makes synthesizers and speakers. Sound, I would say, is like probably the next uh, most important in a party, uh, except from <laughs> Careful planning is all well and good, but improvisation is underestimated. Thanks to the Frequenz speakers and light system, you can get your next party together in no time and throw it just about anywhere you like. And there's more, as designers from IKEA have contributed with a few other party essentials. Imagine that you can have, you know, you can buy the candles, the napkins, speakers, uh, you know, a light system and, and everything. You see, it's, you know, like a complete party from Ikea. A party collection from Ikea. Hell yeah! That's kind of cool, not, isn't it? So huh? cool. For you, is this not a bit of a dream project? It must uh, be. Yeah, you know, I love to throw a party. So for me, it's absolutely a dream to do this together with them. Well, IKEA, home and party all come together. But it's always been like that, I think, actually. You know, you go to IKEA if you want to throw a party. You could buy the candles, you could set your home with our pieces. Now we make it a little bit funkier with adding music. I know you're especially passionate about this. What is it that stands out on these designs? Uh, everybody will talk about the speakers and the light units. I, I love them, but I lo actually love, you know, there are some glasses. Ticky glasses, you know. I, love, I would love to have a ticky bar at home. I never managed with that. I love that because it's just quite unlikely from Marcus to have a pop-up tiki bar in his <laughs> home. One day, the dream. That's the dream. That's the dream. Now, if my parents taught me anything, it's that when you have a party, just don't spill anything on the rugs. So with that, let's cue our next film. IKEA Art Collection. What happens when you mash up age-old tapestry and rug techniques with the worlds of avant-garde fashion, tattoo art and sculptural objects? IKEA wanted to find out. So for the IKEA Art Collection 2019, IKEA let eight contemporary artists representing different artistic expressions, each designing a rug. Most of the artists had never worked with rug art before, but were keen to embrace the challenges and possibilities it offered. The result? A limited edition collection of handmade off-the-wall art pieces, eight space makers that will personalize your home. Some fantastic designs. Can you Thanks. tell us a little bit about the relationship between IKEA and art on this collaboration. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, now we, you heard that uh, democratic design is the heart and soul of IKEA, but we also believe in democratic art. So you could say, what is democratic art for IKEA? It's about making it um, a natural part of people's home, not just something you see in a museum, in a gallery, 
And in order to do that and make it available for the many people, we work with, I would say, our democratic design values, making it affordable and accessible. So uh, that's our vision. Uh, and with all of the pieces that you could have worked with in the home, why have you done rugs? Why rugs? Well, it was a little bit like saying, why can't we combine two things? Like, uh, I mean, we all know that a rug has a kind of a basic function. It's good at keeping the acoustic in a home. Uh, but at the same time, a rock can also be an aesthetical uh, expression that kind of defines the space in the same way that you can have a painting on the wall. And rock can also have that kind of intensity and energy in it. And in order to do that, we work with uh, eight artists from around the world. Then I think it's also about actually when we work with creatives in general, we like to put them outside of their comfort zone yeah. to work in new materials and new techniques and yeah. to learn something. So that's part of it as well. And, you know, that, that connection with IKEA and art, where's that going to go next? I would love it to grow, you know. I, I think the next stage for us will be uh, the same thing as we have done with, uh, with design. We're going to go out there and try to find the new young talents out and work with the uh, art schools also of the world. So I could foresee that coming. And maybe also to merge uh, different creative disciplines mm. in the next art collections. And, and, and nurture future talents. Mm. Mm. That's important. Yeah, I think so. On that note, let's take a look at the next film. Tenkvad. With Tenkvad collection made of rattan, cotton, linen, jute and seagrass, IKEA continues to explore a more sustainable and fluid way of living. The textiles and furniture that make up Tenkvad are tenable in more ways than one made out of rustic, sustainable materials, using less chemicals and water, many of the objects also have dual functions. All items in the collection have been designed with sustainability and flexibility in focus. Products you can mix however you like and bring with you to the beach or the park if you want to. Even the furniture is easy to move around. The Tenkvad collection offers unique looking products that inspire serenity and activity at the same time. A collection that creates peace of mind in a busy world. Annenstans. Annenstans collection is designed to create jobs. It's also the one-of-a-kind result of IKEA and Swedish textile designer Martin Bergström collaborating with artisans in rural Thailand, Romania and India. When traditional techniques meet modern expressions, the outcome is a contemporary collection ranging from cushion covers and bags to ceramic bowls and banana fibre baskets. For designer Martin Bergström, doing his second collection for IKEA, Part of the job description has been to challenge the traditions. With Annenstans, IKEA continues the collaboration with social entrepreneurs around the world, producing precious handcrafted objects while creating jobs for people in vulnerable communities. Furramall. Forget Scandinavian minimalism, at least for now. When IKEA teams up with iconic artist Per B. Sundberg, it's to show another side of the Swedish design heritage. Furramall collection is all about skull-shaped vases, dog candle holders, and many more maximalist masterpieces. The ceramics and glass virtuoso Per B. Sundberg, aka Pelle, is passionate about exploring materials and craft. Furramall is figurative, fun, sometimes absurd, and the result of a design process that partly took place on the factory floor, with Pelle picking and mixing from what he found on the shelves. Marcus, travel is a really integral part of inspiration for IKEA, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think you can see that in, in those three collections coming up. It's all about traveling all over the world and take inspiration and bring that to the next level. And that was actually the start of the Furmall collection as well, because I wanted you know, to send those two wild guys on a road trip. So, <laughs> Guys, tell me, on this road trip, which places were the most inspiring for this project? 
places. Which countries? I think Vietnam in this case, but mm -hmm. China also. But yeah, it ended up there because of, I mean, we were too many suppliers, but in uh, Vietnam we find some really good suppliers that was fit us very well. Or Pelle? I think it's fit us for it comes to so near the production there. So you can see the craftsmanship. And Look, oh no, uh, sorry. No, no. <laughs> Looking back on this, um, collaboration, well, between you and IKEA, but also the two of you, what were the highlights? What did you enjoy the most? I think the highlights was the trip to go to China, Vietnam, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, to see all the places. I think this is uh, the best thing. Oh. For me, the best thing, I think, it was to work with this guy. <laughs> that is such a nice answer. Yeah, I mean, it was fantastic because <laughs> I mean, uh, to work with someone that is even on a higher level about skill than me, then, then I'm really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so it was you, you, much you, more than just a holiday. Mm, it was hard work. One, one, could hard feel work. The, one could feel the bromance, you know, blooming here. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, personally, for me, a road trip means a great playlist. Do you guys, was there a playlist? Were there particular songs that you were listening to on this journey? Not particular. I think it was the elevator music, Chinese elevator music. <laughs> <laughs> and my final question is, if you had to describe the style of the collection, how would you describe it? Hmm. <laughs> I could throw it to the audience. Anyone? No, I'm joking. <laughs> Marcus, what about you? How would you describe where, would, where the collaboration is now? I would say that it's non-typical IKEA, and, and it's very, you know, eclectic, and there's so many different small things in it, which is nice to see. And it's very much, you know, it, it it's mirrors your, your, yeah. you as an artist, yeah. I must say. So exciting. You've got so much to see just after this. Thank you so, so much. Cue the video. Symphonisk. Lots of things must be in place if we're to feel properly at home. But exactly what they are tend to vary. However, research shows that for many people, music is the one most crucial ingredient to boost the mood at home. A few years back, IKEA, realizing the need to learn more about the impact of sound, set out on a journey that soon led to California and to Sonos. The American electronics company proved to be the perfect sparring partner and collaborator. What do you get when you combine great home furnishing knowledge with sound expertise? The answer is Symphonisk. Marcus, why is music so important in the home? I think that music is important in life. That's why it's important in the home. It's a way of putting a mood to your home, you know, and, and making it more personal. It's a little bit like using light and music. That's two ways. And this is, this is quite um, a big step in terms of IKEA's relationship with music so far, isn't it? It is. We worked with teenage, you know, we were in Boston, we have done festivals, uh, try out music and work with musicians. And now we have this, you know, extraordinary relationship with Sonos also. Mm -hmm. That would mean that we're going to, you know, work together on the same kind of platform to make it possible for more people to have Wi-Fi connected speakers and good music. I mean, there's... There's music in all of our homes, and if there isn't, there should be space for music in every home. I think you'll know what I'm talking about once you've seen this next collaboration. Cue the film. As world population increases and urbanization densifies cities, we put new high demands on our homes and the environment. To explore the future needs of urban small space living, IKEA is looking up towards the skies for answers. And at IKEA, we take the notion of space seriously. So seriously, in fact, that we last year sent a team to the Mars Desert Research Station in Utah. 
not because they are easy, but because, because, because they are hard. Elmer, do we have a problem? Yes. <laughs> The journey has also taken the team to Tokyo, where they stayed in capsule hotels and experienced urban small space living firsthand. We're aliens. <laughs> the team has identified four key elements connected to small space living. Water, vegetation, time and air. These are necessities of life, scarce in space, more frequent on Earth. The first result of the endeavour will launch in 2020 and include innovations like an all-new lightweight material and a new take on air purifiers. I mean, Marcus, you get to travel, but literally, from what looks like you actually visited space, this is something else. Yeah, don't go there. It's a cold, you know, and lonely place. <laughs> Not very homely. No. What was that experience like? Because that looks like a lot of travel in very different places. How did that feed the collaboration? I think it's all about learnings, because what we wanted to do is to go into the extremes. You know, space is an extreme way of living, and those capsule living in, in uh, Tokyo is also extreme. So we wanted to learn from that and do better, better solutions. This is a really innovative collection. If you had to pick one piece, it's hard, uh, yeah, but what no. would you choose? Well, there's too many pieces up there, actually. There's yeah, mm. purifying air, it's purifying water, it's like space things. Uh, I, I personally, I love, there is a scaffolding system which is made out of sustainable materials. It's actually made out of wood and waste, and uh, that is a really nice piece. So you could go creative with it and build your own stuff. So I like that, to enhance other people's creativity. We're talking so much about things that you're going to see in the exhibition, but now let's think about what you're not going to see. Cue the collaboration. Scents that add a fresh whiff to home furnishing lie at the heart of the upcoming All Seenly collection. A collaboration between IKEA and Ben Gorham, founder of Swedish perfume house Byredo. Since we believe that sharing ideas make them even better, we also invited a group of students from the Royal College of Art in London to participate. I think my work at Byredo was always a very emotional process. I was interested in taking memories and ideas that I had from my upbringing uh, and travel uh, and translating them into smells. For the collection launch in 2020, the scents will be materialized. Exactly how is still to be revealed. Ben, it is great to have you here. I'm going to try and say this. Osinlig. Uh, try is it again. Is that close? <laughs> one, one more time. Osinlig. Oh, Sin League. Oh, Sin League. Pretty good. <laughs> I thought I'd try. Now, that means invisible in Swedish. Can you tell us a little bit about this, about this collaboration? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, we called it invisible design essentially because the, uh, the major component of, this, uh, of the work was around smell. Uh, we're actually yet to define the, the physical vessels and manifestation of what it should be. Um, and what made this unique, uh, partly from uh, our perspective, is uh, the audience uh, and the idea to, uh, to make smell in the home truly democratic, uh, which meant we had to consider uh, the many, uh, as you call it. And with this, you collaborated and worked with the Royal College of Art. How, did, how does that work? <laughs> Uh, it, well, this is Marcus throwing uh, chips in the mix. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which is, which is uh, yeah. Nice. I, we, I we're not really relying on them coming up with good ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I needed 50 more students. So uh, we brought actually 50 students from Royal College of Art here to, to Elmolt and made them work for 48 hours together with us, the two of us. Uh, it was really, really fun. And they came up with some good ideas. You're going to see four of them upstairs when you see the exhibition. So that was lovely. It, it was, and I, th I think there was, you know, beyond, you know, young creative students contributing to the process, which is, is new for my kind of self-indulgent approach, 
Uh, we actually had a group of students that represented many different cultures and countries, uh, and that was a huge uh, contribution to the project. Uh, as when it comes to smell, you really need to consider um, the, the many unique facets of how people interpret uh, and experience smell uh, in relation to culture and, and geography. I mean, this collaboration is, <clears throat> excuse me, a totally different experience, all of which you're obviously going to see. Uh, ben, thank you so much for your time this thank morning. You. Um, we're now going on to our last collaboration. Is that right? Yes, it is. It's our last collaboration. Let's cue this final film. Thank you, Ben. Ever out. When 10 designers from seven countries across Africa meet five IKEA designers, it's for a collaboration across disciplines as well as continents. And the result is the Everald Collection. Fun, inclusive and expressive. Inspired by the modern urban rituals that are common across all cultures, the things we do and use every day to feel at home Everalt ranges from tableware and seating to textiles. One of the things that I'm hoping that uh, this project will output is um, to give a distribution platform for, for African design, because uh, African design has never had that opportunity. The participating designers come from the fields of fashion, sculpture, architecture and furniture design and have been paired with IKEA designers to create the collection. Everalt mixes modern design ideas with traditional craft into pieces that will make every urban ritual more special. La Duma and Sally, thank you so much. You've come such a long way for this morning. Um, what's this? What's been your experience of this collaboration, La Duma? For me, it has been absolutely fantastic from the start. Um, I must be honest, um, coming from the bottom tip of Africa in Port Elizabeth and traveling all the way to Sweden to come and meet the IKEA team, I looked around and saw a lot of minimalist design and I uh, thought, how am I gonna contribute my African DNA into this aesthetic? So I spent time with the in-house designers and felt more confident and showed them some of my ideas and told them about my culture. That made me more comfortable than anything else. And um, I was happy to infuse design that is not based on function, but mainly on aesthetic and showcase our happiness mm -hmm. as Africans. I love that, the happiness. This and there is, is so much joy in this collection. How different was this process to your usual? I mean, this is one of your designs, so obviously really quite a different experience. Um, it was different in the sense that um, I was, we had to design for 360 degrees of home living. Mm -hmm. um, living in Africa is different living in Europe. So I had to consider how we live in, in, in our modern world as African millennials. And um, I felt as well that as much as IKEA is known to be a global brand, now that they're working with African designers and tap into Africa, they are now officially global. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Sally, I know that your designs are inspired by braiding. Can you break that down a bit for me? Yes, my designs are based first on some kind of obsession for West African braiding sculpture and uh, uh, the, the work of Ohai Ojakere, who's a great photo uh, photographer from Nigeria. And I think the main objective for me was to tap into the ritual of braiding and to confront that ritual into uh, to those cultures, to my reality as well as a Senegalese woman that used to braid for a very long time now. And I think it was interesting to go from here and to put it back now onto an, into an object that is supposed to live with people 365 days mm -hmm. in a year. So it was, it was quite an interesting process for me. I mean, all the collaborations are truly so, so different. But with yours, what do you want people 
how do you want them to interpret it? Because I know joy and colour and happiness are big words. Mm. True. I, I think the, the main thing for me is for people to know the backstory, to relate to that story, to dive into a new ritual that might be not so common in the rest of the, the, the world. I mean, not as much as in Senegal, for example. And just to know that this, this piece exactly was inspired by an environment, the way mm. I feel in my city, uh, the way uh, this ritual feels when I'm involved in it. So I, I want people to dive into the story and then relate to the object mm. from, that, from that perspective. And Marcus, from IKEA's perspective, this is really a new venture in terms of open source, isn't it? Yeah, it is actually, because when we started this, we don't have any, yeah, we have stores in, in Egypt and in uh, Morocco, but not mm. in the rest of Africa. So we, what we wanted to do is to, to design the pieces in a way so we could give something back also. So uh, a lot of the things are designed so they could actually be produced by local craftsmen as well as in factories. So that would mean a little bit of an open source thinking. So Hopefully, we bring it back to Africa and we'll be able to sell it there as well. Laduma and Sally, thank you so, so much. Um, but don't go anywhere just yet. Now, before we let you into the Democratic Design Exhibition, where you can see and feel and smell some of the collaborations, we want to bring up all of the designers. Yeah, I'm bringing them up here on stage. So all can we you. welcome them on with a big round of applause, please? Sonos, Martin, Teenage. Thank you all. You've all come from so far and wide. It has been brilliant for me to be involved and to learn more about these amazing IKEA collaborations. And so now, Marcus, you're going to lead the way? Yeah, let's lead the way upstairs, and then you will be able to talk to each and every one and to see the great stuff that we have done since last year. So follow us up.